Hi everybody, welcome to my presentation. I am Dr. R. Purnima, Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology. In this video, we are going to discuss about the applications of differentiation by taking one method, that is Newton's method. It is also called newton raphson's method. Suppose that a car dealer offers to sell you a car for $18,000 or for payments of $375 per month for 5 years. You would like to know what monthly interest rate the dealer is in effect charging you. To find this answer you have to solve the equation 48x into 1 plus x to the power 60 minus 1 plus x to the power 60 plus 1 that is equal to 0. So we can find an approximate solution to equation 1 by plotting the left side of the equation. So using a graphic device the, and after experimenting with viewing rectangles we produce the graph in figure 1. So we see that in addition to the solution x is equal to 0 which doesn't interest us, there is a solution between 0.007 and 0.008. Zooming in shows that the root is approximately 0.0076. If we need more accuracy, we could zoom in repeatedly, but that becomes tiresome. A faster alternative is to use a numerical root finder on a calculator or computer algebra system. If we do so, we find that the root correct to 9 decimal places is 0.00762863. How do those numerals root finders work? They use a variety of methods but most of them make some use of Newton's method. It is also called as Newton's Raphson's method. We will explain how this method works partly to show what happens inside a calculator or computer and partly as an application of the idea of linear approximation. The geometry behind Newton's method is shown in figure 2 where the root that we are trying to find is labeled R. We start with our first approximation x1 which is obtained by guzzling or form a rough sketch of the graph of f or from a computer generated graph of f. Consider the tangent line L to the curve y is equal to f of x at the point x1 comma f of x1 and look at the x intercept of L labeled x2. The idea behind Newton's method is that the tangent line is close to the curve and so its x intercept x2 is close to the x intercept of the curve namely the root r that we are seeking because the tangent line is a line we can easily find its x intercept. To find the formula for x2 in terms of x1, we use the fact that the slope of L is f dash of x1. So its equation is y minus f of x1 equal to f dash of x1 into x minus x1. That is the x intercept of L is x2. We set y is equal to 0 and work time 0 minus f of x1 equal to f dash of x1 into x2 minus x1. If f dash of x1 is not equal to 0, we can solve this equation for x2. That is x2 equal to x1 minus f of x1 by f dash of x1. We use x2 as a second approximation to r. Next we repeat this procedure will x1 replaced by the second approximation x2 using the tangent line at x2 comma f of x2. This gives the third approximation x3 equal to x2 minus f of x2 by f dash of x2. So if we keep repeating this process we obtain a sequence of approximations x1, x2, x3, x4 etc. as shown in figure 3. The diagram representation. So in general if the nth approximation is xn and f dash of x1 equal, is not equal to 0 then the next approximation is given by xn plus 1 equal to xn minus f of xn by f dash of xn. 
if the numbers x n become closer and closer to r as n becomes large then we say that the sequence converges to r and we write limit n tends to infinity of x n equal to r starting with x1 equal to 2 find the third approximation x3 to the root of the equation x cube minus 2x minus y equal to 0 so by considering this example we are proving by newton's raphson's method so that we can apply that method by taking the function f of x is x cube minus 2x minus 5 and we are finding the derivative of this function that is f dash of x is 3x square minus 2 So Newton himself used this equation to illustrate his method, and he chose x1 equal to 2 after some experimentation because f of 1 is minus 6 and f of 2 is minus 1, and f of 3 is plus 16. So equation 2 becomes x n plus 1 equal to x n minus x n q minus 2 x n minus 5 divided by 3 x n square minus 2. With n is equal to one, we are having that x two equal to x one minus x one q minus two x one minus y divided by three x one square minus two. So we are replacing the value of x one as two. That is two minus two q minus two into two minus y divided by three into two square minus two. That is two point one. So then, with n is equal to two, we obtain x three is x two minus x two q minus two x two minus y divided by three x two square minus two. So x two is replaced by two point one. That is two point one minus two point one the whole cube minus two into two point one minus y divided by three into two point one the whole square minus two. That is approximately equivalent to two point zero nine four six. So it turns out that this third approximation x3 is 2.0946 is accurate to four decimal places. Thank you.